Sutton Hoo Burial Ship In the shadows of World War II, on the verdant fields owned by Edith Pretty, lay a pair of unassuming mounds. Pretty, intrigued by local folklore and ancient legends, permitted Basil Brown, a local self-taught archaeologist, to excavate. What he unearthed in 1938 would astound the world. Brown's spade first struck the remnants of a great ship, its timbers long decayed, but leaving a ghostly imprint in the sand. This was no ordinary vessel. It was a royal tomb, measuring nearly 90 feet long, the final resting place of an Anglo-Saxon king. Within its embrace lay a trove of artifacts of such craftsmanship and diversity that they challenged our understanding of the era. There was a lyre, its delicate form hinting at the music that once filled the mead halls, a sword and shield, symbols of power and protection, and a Byzantine silver plate, suggesting a world connected by trade and diplomacy far beyond the shores of England. Among these treasures, the Sutton Hoo Purslid stood out. Modern historians have hailed it as, quote, one of the most remarkable creations of the early medieval period. Its intricate gold decorations and finely detailed ornamental features speak of a society rich in artistry and sophistication. This purse lid, along with the iconic Sutton Hoo helmet, a decorated headpiece believed to have adorned Anglo-Saxon royalty, now resides in the British Museum. The ship's discovery, alongside two Anglo-Saxon cemeteries dating back to the 6th or 7th century, opened a window into a period previously thought to have been a dark age, lacking historical context. Scholars now believe that the individual buried in the ship was immensely important. Redwald, king of the East Angles, is a likely candidate, suggesting that Sutton Hoo was the resting place of a powerful and influential ruler. The wider implications of the Sutton Hoo ship burial find are profound. They confirm that there was significant Anglo-Saxon activity in Britain during this period. Basil Brown's discovery has completely changed how historians view Europe in the early Middle Ages. Mausoleum of Helicarnassus Envision a great tomb, a fusion of Greek, Egyptian, and Lycian architectural styles, standing majestically in ancient Helicarnassus, modern-day Bodrum, Turkey. This is the Mausoleum of Helicarnassus, not merely a tomb, but a symbol of love, power, and the cosmopolitan nature of the Hellenistic world. Built around 350 BC for Mausolus, a satrap in the Persian Empire, and his sister wife Artemisia II, this structure transcends its original purpose, leaving a legacy that endures in our language and culture. Rising to approximately 45 meters, this architectural marvel was a collaboration of the era's most esteemed artists and architects. Architects Satyros and Pythias of Prien designed the mausoleum, creating a structure that included a stepped pyramid, a colonnaded temple-like structure, and a massive statue of a four-horse chariot at its pinnacle. Each side of the mausoleum was a canvas for one of four legendary sculptors, Scopus, Leocaris, Timotheus, and Briaxis. Their combined genius created a tapestry of sculptural reliefs and statues depicting Mausolus, Artemisia, and various mythological figures, showcasing an unprecedented level of artistic achievement. For over 1,500 years, the mausoleum stood as a testament to human ingenuity until a series of earthquakes consigned it to history. Rediscovered in the 19th century by British archaeologist Charles Thomas Newton, many of its artifacts, including statues and reliefs, now reside in the British Museum, offering a glimpse into the artistic and cultural richness of the period. The term mausoleum, now used to describe any grand tomb, originates from this awe-inspiring structure. Today, the site stands as a significant archaeological location. It offers insights into ancient engineering, art, and cultural exchange, reflecting the mausoleum's unique blend of influences from different civilizations. Dolmen de Soto For thousands of years, a mysterious relic lay hidden beneath the Spanish earth, silently guarding its ancient secrets. It wasn't until the 1920s that the Dolmen de Soto, a monumental Neolithic tomb nestled in the hills of the Andalusia region and dating back 5,000 years, unveiled its presence to the modern world. In 1922, Armando de Soto Morillas, unaware of the historical treasure beneath his feet, embarked on a routine construction project on his estate, only to stumble upon a portal to a forgotten time. 
he soon realized the significance of his find, and a German archaeologist named Hugo Obermeier was summoned to explore this window into antiquity. By 1924, Obermeier had unearthed the haunting tableau, eight bodies curled in a fetal position, each ceremonially interred with relics, whispering tales of an ancient civilization. This remarkable discovery initiated a full-scale excavation of the site. Externally, the Dolmen del Soto presents itself as a humble earthen mound, yet its unassuming facade belies the architectural marvel within, a passage stretching over 20 meters, leading to a chamber crafted with an almost celestial precision. The builders of the Dolmen del Soto demonstrated a profound understanding of celestial movements, aligning the tunnel so that during the equinox, the first rays of sunlight illuminate the chamber, symbolizing rebirth for those interred within. Within this heart of the dolmen, a trove of discoveries awaited. Among them, 64 large engraved standing stones support the tunnel's ceiling, and artifacts, including knives, cups, and fossils, were found, offering glimpses into the lives of those who built this megalithic structure. The engravings on the dolmen's walls, ranging from simple geometric patterns to intricate depictions of warriors, offer a tantalizing glimpse into the beliefs and daily life of a civilization long vanished. Historians and scientists continue to decipher the relationship between these engravings and the individuals buried here, with spectroscopy analyses revealing traces of pigmentation, suggesting that these walls once resembled a vivid gallery of vibrant rock art. Also noteworthy are the stones themselves, comprising a mix of materials, some rare in Andalusia, hinting at the extensive reach of trade networks in this ancient society. After nine intensive years of restoration, the Dolmen de Soto is a Spanish national monument today. Ongoing archaeological studies keep peeling back layers of history, promising to reveal more about the eight individuals buried within and the civilization they belong to. The Red Queen Beneath the verdant canopy of Mexico's Palenque National Park, a centuries-old mystery lay dormant, hidden within the remnants of the once mighty Maya civilization. In 1994, a seemingly insignificant crack in a stone stairway, no wider than a whisper, captured the attention of a young archaeologist performing maintenance work, Fanny Lopez Jimenez. This slender aperture was not just a breach in the ancient architecture, but a gateway to one of the most astonishing archaeological finds of the century, the Tomb of the Red Queen, a noblewoman enshrouded in an aura of mystery and stunningly covered with a bright scarlet powder made from the mineral cinnabar. The Maya, known for their astronomical knowledge, architectural prowess, and intricate hierarchical society also harbored deep reverence for the rituals of death. In Palenque, once a bustling epicenter of Maya power and culture, the dead, especially those of noble birth, were interred with elaborate ceremony, their final resting places becoming vaults of both riches and mysteries. As Jimenez's flashlight pierced the darkness within the narrow corridor, a sense of ancient secrets hung in the stale air. The passage revealed by the crack led to a labyrinth of stone, culminating in a trio of chambers. Two chambers bore silent witness to long-forgotten rituals, but it was the third, sealed and solemn, that held the heart of the discovery. After a meticulous effort to breach the sealed third chamber, Jimenez and her team were met with a sight of profound wonder, a perfectly preserved tomb, untouched by time. Dominating the space was a stone sarcophagus of monumental size, nearly two and a half meters in length, awaiting its revelation. The opening of the sarcophagus, a painstaking 14-hour endeavor, unveiled its occupant, a noblewoman adorned in jade and pearl, and accompanied by ornate obsidian blades, her resting place bathed in a striking red hue from ground cinnabar. This vivid coloration led to her being christened the Red Queen. The discovery of the skeletons of two sacrificed servants nearby, a woman in her early thirties and a boy of about eleven, added layers of both solemnity and intrigue to the find. The Red Queen, aged about sixty at the time of her death, was evidently a person of significant stature, possibly linked to the Maya elite who ruled this ancient city. Yet, her true identity remained shrouded in mystery. Was she a ruler, a consort, or a high priestess? Her connection to the Maya lineage, a puzzle amidst the annals of history, continues to fuel scholarly debate and research. Mausoleum of the First Shin Emperor This is the mausoleum of the First Shin Emperor, Qin Shi Huang, a ruler so powerful 
that his final resting place was an architectural marvel mirroring an entire city. Guarded by a terracotta army and shrouded in deadly secrets, this tomb has captivated historians and adventurers for centuries. Yet beneath its surface lies a tale as toxic as it is tantalizing. The Qin Dynasty, marking the dawn of imperial Chinese history around 220 BC, was a turning point that unified China under a singular formidable rule. The emperor, revered as a godlike figure, commissioned a mausoleum of unprecedented scale. Taking 38 years to complete, its layout was a mirror image of Shenyang, the then capital, symbolizing his unyielding dominance even in death. The mausoleum of the first Qin Emperor is a wonder in itself, with its sprawling necropolis and the awe-inspiring terracotta army, each soldier unique, standing guard for eternity. Yet what lies beneath these visible marvels is a narrative steeped in irony and mystery. Chinese historian Sima Chan, writing a century later, chronicled the tomb's construction, revealing the use of mercury to represent the rivers and oceans of the emperor's empire. This very element, revered for its mystical properties, is believed to have been the emperor's undoing as he consumed mercury-laced wine in his quest for immortality. Sima Chan's texts also tantalize with hints of lethal ingenuity, booby traps designed to thwart tomb raiders. Translated accounts speak of crossbows primed to fire and other hidden perils, a blend of historical possibility and mythical embellishment that fuels endless speculation. Despite the allure of its mysteries, the tomb remains largely unexplored. Modern archaeologists are wary not only of the alleged dangers, but also of the potential damage excavation could cause to invaluable artifacts they are not yet equipped to preserve. Thus, the mausoleum of the first Qin Emperor is now a protected UNESCO World Heritage Site, a subject of surface-level studies and distant admiration. As we ponder the efforts put into constructing a terracotta army and elaborate defenses, it's intriguing to consider what other secrets this ancient marvel holds. Unplundered and untouched, the tomb's inner chambers might still hold treasures and stories of ancient China, a tantalizing mystery, awaiting the day it can safely reveal its hidden truths. Are you ready to unlock the secrets of the past? Subscribe now to Dark Five's Ancient Mysteries channel and embark on a journey to uncover the most enigmatic and awe-inspiring mysteries of ancient times. Leave a comment if there are any ancient mysteries you want us to explore in upcoming videos.